hand right now, please. Thank you, thank you very much. Well, how blessed we are, thank you, okay, that we have that time, that praise and worship. Why is it called praise and worship? It's for Him. No, we enjoy it. Man, we feed on it. It feels good, but it's for Him. Amen. Praise and worship is for our Father in Heaven. Amen. With that, we'll take a moment. I want everybody to stand back up. And we're going to praise God for a second, okay? Oh, yeah. Come on. Come on. Give Him the praise. Give Him the praise. Our Father in Heaven. All right. About the reason we're here is for Him. Yeah. We're for Him. Thank you, thank you. Oh, Heavenly Father, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Please have a seat. Please have a seat. Thank you. Now, I have a message. It's been on my heart for quite a while. And uh, God had me prepared before I was asked to preach. <laughs> and so, but I do want to, I do want you to understand, okay, we have several churches here tonight. Amen. Amen. Several churches here tonight. God's laid it on my heart a long time ago. This is months ago about unity. Yes. Unity. Amen. And the reason I reached out to all these churches, folks, God wants us to be one in his body. Amen. 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 I'm going to read a scripture real quick that he actually led to me to this morning. Okay. Ephesians 4, 15 through 16. I'm reading from the New King James Version. But speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ. Say Christ. Christ. From whom the whole body... Join and knit together by whatever joint supplies, according to the effective work by which every part, every part does its share. Because mm -hmm. growth and growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. Yeah. If you would please bow your heads. Yes. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you. I thank you. For being part of your body. Thank you, Lord, for the right arm, the left arm, the left leg, the right leg, all the fingers, every part of the body. Because every part of the body serves its function for you. You are at the head, Lord, and you give us gifts that we can bring and edify the body. Thank you, Lord, for those gifts. Lord, I'd like to, right at this moment, I'd like to lift up blessings on Pastor Charles and Ida Haynes, Lord, and the leadership that they bring to this church. Lord, this is going to be a light in your community here, Lord, and they head that up. And I appreciate that, Lord, and I thank you for that. Lord, I'd also like to lift up Pastor Sandra Gates and Doug Gates, Lord. The amazing works that they're doing in Yoakum. Their church too, Lord. We ask for blessings on their church. Yes. Yes. And Lord, I'm telling you what. Right now I'm going to ask for blessings on a woman that's in my heart. Yes. Rejoice, Price. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. What a powerful woman. Yes. Lord, I thank you for her. Yes. Lord, I thank you that we have this time together. I thank you that we are in a country where we can get together, Lord. Yes. We can post it on Facebook. We can tell our friends. We can call them up and say, I'm going to church, Lord. I'm going to church. King David said when he goes to the house of the Lord, he gets excited. That's the happiest time he is. We're talking about one of the richest men in the world at that time. He was happiest when he was going to church. Lord, you've given us the opportunity today to come and worship you in these four walls, Lord. Now, after we leave these four walls, Lord, I want you to make sure that the message that you have today, your holy word, goes with each one of us. Yes. As we go through the rest of our day and through our week, Lord, let the conviction of the Holy Spirit be on us. Let us continually be reminded of these words that you have for us to sing, Lord. Yes. 
I'm an empty vessel. I'm just this guy. Yes. It's all about you, Father. Yes. I appreciate the fact that you've put this on me, Lord. I really honestly do. But I'm a nobody. Yes. I'm a nobody trying to tell everybody yes. about somebody yes. that can save anybody. Amen. Yes, Jesus. Oh, thank you so much. In Jesus' name. Jesus name. Amen. 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 All right. Well, last time I was here, last couple times I was here, I, I thought it was really neat to make this beautiful PowerPoint and these handouts and everything. Like God put it on my heart. It's not about the show. Amen. It's about His Word. So you're going to see two slides tonight. You're going to see the, the message, and then you're only going to see Scripture. Because everything revolves around the Scripture. Yes. Then, you know, I have it printed up. But God put it on my heart. And I'm here to tell you, everybody, you don't have it on your phone from here on out. When you come into his house, have his word in your hand. Amen. He put it on my heart to tell you guys that. You can take it. You can leave it. But I'm going to listen to God. Because me and my house, yes, we're going to serve the Lord. Tonight's message is about faith. Commended faith. The faith of a Roman centurion. Faith plays an integral, integral part of the relationship that we have with our Father. Faith can heal. Who here has prayed and God's answered that prayer and, prayer and healed somebody? He can heal. He can heal you physically. He can heal you mentally. He can heal the wounds that come to your heart and your spirit. Lord, all we got to do is ask. And He will heal. But I'm going to throw something else out there to you. Preach it. This, there you go. Preach it. Preach Faith it. can also destroy. <laughs> what? What? What are you talking about? <laughs> Faith can destroy. Oh, yeah. I'll tell you what. Faith in the world will destroy you in a heartbeat. You ever heard somebody wake up in the morning and say, Oh, oh this is just going to be another one of those days. <laughs> Who's, who's that, whose faith is that? That's faith in the world. You wake up in the morning, oh, I still feel sick. I, I, knew, I knew I was going to be sick like I was yesterday. Mm -hmm. Faith in the world. Okay. God's got nothing for me. He doesn't love me. That's listening to the enemy and having faith in the lies the enemy tells you. Right. Now, there's a lot of definitions at first, I started out and Googled the definition. There's a lot of good things about technology, but Google gives you kind of secular stuff. So I went to Noah Webster's, Noah Webster's Dictionary, and Google said complete trust or confidence in someone or something. This is the definition. It covers the Word of God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're looking up a word using Noah Webster's Dictionary because there's Scripture after Scripture after Scripture. And it says, the ascent of the mind or understanding to the truth of what God has revealed. That's what faith is. Mm -hmm. Simple belief of the, of the Scriptures, of the being and perfections of God, and of the existence, character, and doctrines of Christ. Mm -hmm. That's what faith really, truly is. Do you know how they train an elephant? They start him off as a baby. They put a collar around his leg. And they put a chain on that baby that a train couldn't break. So as that baby gets older and older and older, that rope can get smaller and smaller and smaller. Then you can see a full-grown elephant sitting there with just a piece of twine on their leg and they're going nowhere. Because that elephant has faith in the world. <laughs> there are 42 scriptures, and I'm not, I didn't get them all out. I say look them up. 
42 scriptures on God as a chain breaker. I give you some homework right now. Look up some scripture on chain breaking. So when you're feeling down and out and you lack faith, you can go to his word and get that. Amen. Okay, now I'm going to start preaching. <laughs> if you would, please turn to Luke chapter 7. We're going to start in verse 1. Now up on the board, you'll see that it's, it's uh, the NLT version. I'm going to be reading from the King James Version. It is wonderful that we have different versions. These are different different translations of the Greek and Hebrew that we have because there's so much more to those words than just the English language. So I'm going to read from the King James Version. If you would, please follow along. Now, when he had ended all his sayings in the audience of the people, he entered into Capernaum. And a certain centurion's servant, who was dear unto him, was sick and ready to die. And we, heard, when he heard of Jesus, I want everybody to say, heard of Jesus. Heard of Jesus. He sent unto him the elders of the Jews, beseeching him, begging him, if you would, that he would come and heal his servant. And when they came to Jesus, they besought him instantly, saying, that, that he was worthy for whom he should do this. They're telling Jesus that this Roman is worthy and he should, that he should come and, and, re, and help his servant. Okay? Heal his servant. For he loveth our nation and he hath built us a synagogue. Then Jesus went with them. No questions asked. Jesus went with them. And when he was now not far from the house, the centurion sent friends to him, saying unto him, Lord, trouble not thyself, thyself rather, for I am not worthy that thou should enter under my roof. Wherefore, neither thought I myself worthy to come unto thee. What he's saying here is, I'm not worthy. I'm so unworthy, I'm not even going to present myself to you. But say in a word, and my servant shall be healed. For I also am a man set under authority. Say authority. authority. That's right. Authority. God's authority. Having under me soldiers, and I say unto one, go, and he goeth. And another, come, and he cometh. To my servant, do this, and he doeth it. When Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him. The version on the board says amazed. He was amazed. And turned him about. Jesus turned around and said unto the people that followed him, I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, not in Israel. And then they were sent, returning to the house, found the servant whole that had been sick. I'm going to leave this open because there's power in His Word. So what I'm going to do tonight is I'm going to break down these individual verses so you can understand what faith in our God truly should be. It says in the first verse, this is after He performed many miracles. I suggest you go back and read chapter 6 so you can really understand the introduction it comes into this. But verse 2, it says, At that time, the highly valued slave of a Roman officer was sick and near death. This starts out, this scripture starts out with some oddities. First, Romans in history were known to be the cruelest slave owners that were out there. One, one Roman woman actually had her slave put to death because she didn't brush her hair right. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so this is kind of telling you what's working on this man, this Roman. Right? Why? Why? 
Is he feeling this way towards slaves? Then this is also a Roman officer. This Roman officer was wealthy. He made up to 17 times as much as another soldier. He was in charge of at least 100 plus people. That's what the centurion, centaur, is 100. That's what that means. He was over 100 people. And we see later that he understands authority. Do you realize that a Roman officer had to have so much dedication that his, if his commanding officer came to him and said, fall on your sword, he had to fall on his sword right there? Mm. This man understood authority. In verse 3, it says, When the officer heard about Jesus, he sent some respected Jewish elders to ask him to come and heal his slave. Well, this officer didn't meet Jesus. Didn't see Jesus perform any miracles. He heard about Jesus and instantly... He was convicted that this man can heal my servant as well. And so he, he sent respected Jews. And why did he do that? Because he had respect for the Jewish people, which was uncommon also among Roman officers, because they were in charge. They were large and in charge. And they could do whatever they wanted to do. But he understood and respected enough to send the Jewish elders to him. This is extremely uncharacteristic of a Roman officer. The next part of that verse that's also interesting is these Jewish elders. You have to think about it for just a second. This is, this is another oddity in this scripture. These Jewish, and these the, the scripture says they were most likely Sanhedrin. Does everybody know what a Sanhedrin is? Sanhedrin was the ruling party. You got the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and then you had the Sanhedrin above them. These are the same guys that followed Jesus around and tried to trip him up any chance they got. These are the same guys that tried to corner him into blasphemy. And they're being sent to grovel at the feet. <laughs> of Jesus. So they earnestly beg Jesus to help the man. If anyone deserves your help, he does, they said. For he loved the Jewish people and even built a synagogue for us. These men were religious men. They said he deserved it. I want you to think about that for a second. When you go in prayer to our Father, Lord, oh, and I've heard this before, and I've said it myself, Lord, I went to church this week. Lord, I pray to you all the time. I tithe. I give you everything. I mean, I praise you, Lord. I deserve for you to hear my prayer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hold on a second. That's about works, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's about works. These men didn't worship God. They worshipped the law. Mm -hmm. They looked at the law as their saving grace. If we obey the law, God's going to give us something. That ain't how it works. That is not how it works. Okay? This is the opposing aspect of this whole story. This is pivot. This is what religious man wants you to think. This is what some of our churches in this country at this time want you to think. That if you do our rules and you do our regulations and you do our dogma and you perform like we want you to perform, jump through hoops or whatever the case may be, God's going to love you. No, that's not what happens. And so this is what these guys were asking Jesus to do. And he says that they love our people. They love the Jewish people. They were more concerned about his money. 
They came to Jesus saying, man, I hope this guy can do something because they built us a synagogue. You know, you know what a synagogue is? It's not a church. It's not a temple where we can all go to. It's where these learned individuals could go and study the scripture and study the law. So it wasn't for the people they were concerned about. It was for them. And then it says, so Jesus went with them. I'm getting way away from my notes, which is great because the Holy Spirit's telling me what to do here. But I want to find something real quick because this is extremely important. Okay. In the original Greek text, it says he went with them. And I love this. And I'll tell you why. The word is paruho in the Greek. Paruho in the Greek. It means to pursue the journey on which one was sent or has entered. Now, what journey was Jesus on? We know that he was on his father's business. Jesus discerned in this moment that it's a Roman Hmm. It's Jewish leaders. Hmm. God has something going on here, so he went. It says in Luke 2.49, just to make sure you understand, Luke 2.49 in the New King James Version, he said to his mother and father, why did you seek me? Did you not know that I must be on my father's business? Amen. Amen. Jesus doesn't do what people want him to do. Jesus doesn't do what people that worship the law want him, wants him to do. Jesus really doesn't do what I want him to do. I can pray that his will be done in my life because I don't want him to do what Ben wants him to do. I want him to do what he wants to do. Why? Because I can have this. Oh, I'm so proud of it, man. Look what I did. Oh, man, I worked for this. Oh, I got, oh, I'm going to buy that new car. Mm, I got this. Or I can give it to God and get his will. I'm telling you, in Revelation, what does it say? It says to get the gold that he has refined because it's the purest gold out there. So Jesus goes with these guys. And then what happens? Just before they arrived at the house, the officer sent some friends to say, Lord. Does everybody see that that Lord is spelled with a capital L? Lord. That had to blow the minds of these Jewish Sanhedrin and the crowd that was there. You realize that the word Lord in the Greek, what that word means is one that can dispose of anything because he is the owner. That's right. They were sight unseen talking to Jesus in front of these people that thought they knew the word. Sight unseen went to Jesus and called him Lord. That's also a word, as we know, that is the Messiah, but it's also a word that they reserved for the Roman emperor. Lord with a capital L is what they call the Roman Emperor. But that's what these people said to Jesus in front of all these men that thought they knew best. This shows me the kind of faith that this Roman had, sight unseen. Sight unseen. What does uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 7 say? Walk by faith and not by sight. Another translation says, live by believing. It's the same thing. Live by believing. Okay, so when you walk, you want to walk with your eyes open. Okay, and it says in the scripture, you don't have to do that, but I'd rather walk there's my father. 
with my eyes wide open. And that's what this Roman was doing. And he had no idea why this was happening, but he knew he was convicted on himself that that's what he should do. I asked myself, thinking about this, do I have that kind of faith? I like to say most of the time I do. But there are times that I don't. I'm just a man. I was born into sin. I'm a sinner. I have sinful thoughts. I do things that are against God. It's just a fact. You think because I came up here and I'm talking to you guys today that I'm perfect? No. No. I thank God that I'm not. Paul thanked God for the thorn in his flesh. I got lots of thorns. They're all over. And I thank God for that because in my weakness, He's he's, he's strong. I tell you what, I love preaching with these guys in the audience. Man, I love you guys. I I seriously do. I do. Thank you. I just wanted to say that and send blessings on you and praise God for you guys. See, the Roman had merely heard about Jesus. It was through the grapevine he heard about Jesus. We want miracles. We want to see a little kid's leg grow. Well, if I saw that, I'd believe. If God answers my prayer, I'll believe. That's not what this Roman did. He believed without seeing a thing. Jesus didn't come over to his house. And then you have to understand, too, that this Roman had the power to send his troops to grab Jesus and bring him by force. How many of us try to force Jesus to do what we want him to do? <laughs> All the time. All the time. We think, oh, oh, Lord. You know, you know, like that girlfriend of mine. I'm married. I'm just being figurative here. I don't have a girlfriend. <laughs> Lord, oh, that girlfriend of mine. I mean... The people at church told me that she's no good. My mom and dad told me no good. The Lord, change her. <laughs> change her. Lord, I know I didn't listen to you when I took that job. I know everybody told me that that job was just not the right job for me. But Lord, I took it anyway. I didn't listen to that still, small voice. What's a still, small voice? Anybody know what that still, small voice is? The Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. That's God. That's absolutely. Holy Spirit speaking to you. You need to listen to it. Lord, oh, man. Oh, this place that I'm at. Oh, Lord, I know I promised the pastor I would do Bible study. And uh, I would make dinner on Wednesday night. And I'd clean the church on Saturday. Oh, and then I'd also greet everybody. I know I told the pastor I would do all those things, Lord, but man, it's just overwhelming. Lord, I've changed the pastor's mind. Have him call me up. (laughs) I committed myself, but Lord, I want you to change his mind. (laughs) We try to force that on God. You've got to understand something real quick. God hears those kind of prayers. But does he listen? No. It has to be his will. It has to be his will. Hmm. Now i got to find out where I was at. (laughs) Oh, yeah. So he, in verse 6, so Jesus went with them, but just before they arrived at the house, he said, the Lord, don't trouble yourself by coming to my house, for I'm not worthy of such an honor. How much is that opposed to what these Rome, these uh, Jewish leaders did? I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy to come and meet you. Just say the word from where you are, and my servant will be healed. He is submitting himself to the blessings of God without no deserving involved there. He's saying, God, if you can you want to do this from wherever you're at, Jesus? I know you can do that because I understand authority. I know this because I'm under the authority of my super superior officers. And I have authority over my soldiers. I only need to say go 
and they go. Or come and they go. And they come, rather. And if I say to my slaves, do this, they do it. This man understood the authority of our God. He understood that because he was under the same kind of lifestyle that he understood that when his officer told him to jump, he said how high. You know what I'm talking about, right? When you tell the soldier to do, what are they, what are they supposed to do? Okay, and if they don't listen to you, they don't listen to the command, how bad can it get? Bad. bad. Prison? Death. death. It could be death. So we need to listen to our Father. In verse 9, it said, When Jesus heard this, he was amazed. Now, I really got to get to my notes because this is extremely important. He was amazed. Turning to the crowd that was following him, he said, I tell you, I haven't seen faith like this in all of Israel. Okay? Faith. And we know in the next verse, and we're going to go back to it, but the next verse, that his slave was healed. Conversely, I want you all to think about the story in Mark 6, verse verse 5. Mark 6, verse 5, if you want to turn to that, I'll hold on a second. Because this is the other time that Jesus was amazed. He was amazed at this man's faith. And he is in Mark 6, verse 5, amazed at the lack of faith. It says he, and he's talking about Jesus, could not do any miracles there except lay his hands on a few sick people and heal them. Now, I'm not going to get too far off on that, but I want you to understand, okay? This man's faith moved God's hand. His faith, his 100% blind faith, moved God's hand and healed his servant. Now let's think about this. Jesus was back in his homeland. That's what we're talking about here in Mark 6, verse six, verse 5. He was back in his homeland. People were saying, ain't that Jesus? That carpenter, Joseph's, Joseph's boy, Mary's boy? <sighs> he ain't nothing. That's just a nobody. And so what happened? Their lack of faith. Faith in something else. Their lack of faith bound God's hands. Mm. Their lack of faith prevented any miracles from happening. Mm-hmm. And you want to you sit there and go, oh, that doesn't sound right. Your lack of faith, my lack of faith, keeps God from blessing you yes. and answering your prayers. Yes. Our lack of faith does that. When they were building the Tower of Babel, what did God say? He said, let's go down there and stop them. Because if we don't stop them, nothing will be able to. You understand? That's the same thing that he's saying there, as he said in Mark 6, verse 5. Their lack of faith, their pride. Who they are. Not who God is, but who they are. That's going to make it unstoppable. He wanted to protect us. The whole story of Babel is about him protecting us from ourselves. Because if we get too prideful and we think it's all about us and we think that God's got nothing to do with it, that's what's going to happen. That's what's going to happen. Now, verse 10, it says, When the officer's friend returned to his house, they found the slave completely healed. And they returned to the house and found the servant whole that had been sick. Yes, Lord. (laughs) Healed and whole. Now, the Bible doesn't say this, but I can see this in my mind's eye. This servant, I would have loved to, I don't know, male or female, I bet you that skin was baby soft. What am I saying? He was made whole. 
God creates us in his image, right? Yes. And that's whole. I bet you there wasn't a cavity in that man's mouth. I bet you his hair felt like it had the most expensive conditioner <laughs> that ever was invented that day. No bad breath. <laughs> nothing. He was made whole. He was healed. Yes. He was healed Amen. completely and made whole completely by Jesus. Let's tell him not to go back to that. <laughs> Look, folks. God can do anything. Yes. All we have to do is receive. All we have to do is submit. All we have to do is get on our face and see His face. All we have to do is bow down and touch his feet. Yes. Yes. Oh God, I don't want to do that, man. Come on now. Man, you're asking me to do something. No, 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 no. I'm not telling you to do something. Folks, we spend, I'm 50. I'm, if I'm lucky, I'm going to live another 30 years or so. Okay? 80 years on earth. So I can choose. I can choose to be consumed by the fire that is our God, yeah, cleansed and made whole, yes. giving Him and worshiping Him, giving Him the glory, realizing that this $20 in my pocket, that's not Ben's money, that's God's money that He's given me and blessed me. Yeah. I can do that. Okay? Or the best time in my life can be the 80 years I spent on earth because the rest of eternity... I'm going to spend in the pit of fire. Mm. I got a choice. Be consumed by his fire or spend eternity in fire. I don't know about you guys, but I want to spend eternity with my father. I want to, be, I want to spend eternity sitting there singing praises to him below the throne. That's where I want to be. One other scripture told me earlier to, to look this up and now I understand why. Okay. I'm going to read real quick. John 6, 16 through 21, New King James Version. This was like 3 o'clock in the morning God woke me up. And uh, he had me read this scripture. He said, you're going to need it. Now when evening came, you hear evening? That's my southern drawl. Evening. <laughs> evening came. I'll say afternoon so I don't sound too southern. Afternoon came. His disciples went down to the sea. Now you got to remember right before this, this is five loaves, two fish, just to give you kind of a pre-entry into what I'm reading here. And after that, Jesus was worn out. And so he went off by himself. He did that quite often, and I suggest you guys do that as well. When you're feeling worn out, get by yourself. Find a place to pray in private. Okay? Because Jesus did it. If it's good enough for Jesus, it's good enough for me. His disciples went down to the sea, got into the boat, and went over the sea toward Capernaum. Capernaum. And it was already dark, and Jesus had not come to them. Then the sea arose because a great wind was blowing. So when they rode about three or four miles, three or four miles, that's a ways out there. Anybody been in a boat three or four? I know, Doug, you know what I'm talking about. Three or four miles is a long way in a boat. You get in a car, you drive a couple minutes down the road, you're three or four miles in a boat. Three or four, and you row in a boat? Come on now. You had no Evan roots back then. <laughs> The sea arose, and when he had, they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea, okay, drawing near the boat, and they were afraid. There's two scriptures on walking on water. The other one, Paul jumped out of the boat, lost sight of Jesus, started singing, Jesus had to save him. This one right here, Jesus was out, the wind's blowing, things are whipping. He's just walking out there. 
He said, it is I, do not be afraid. Then they willingly, say willingly, willingly. received him into the boat. This is where it gets real oh, whew, powerful. And immediately the boat was at the land where they were going. Jesus teleported those guys from out in the ocean to where they were going when they willingly let him into the boat. Folks, don't let Jesus walk out on the water and not invite him into the boat. Jesus gives us choice, free will. God the Father gave us free will. We can do as we please. But if we take that free will and submit to him and willingly let him into our boats, you're going to get to your destination. Lickety split. Another, I'm, I'm Southern, lickety split. Lickety split, you're going to be at your destination. Because they had faith in Christ and they will, willingly submitted to him and asked him into the boat. If you would, please bow your heads, folks. Dear Heavenly Father, you are an incredible God. Lord, everything that we have, everything that we have is because of you, Lord. Lord, thank you for this message, Lord. It is amazing. This is just 10 verses in the Bible, Lord. 10 verses in the Bible telling the things that you can do for each and every one of us. And we thank you for that. Thank you for this word, Lord. Thank you for putting it on my heart. Thank you for letting these, these fine folks at Grace Point ask me to come and preach today, Lord. What a blessing they have been in my life. And I appreciate that very much, Lord. Now, if you continue to keep your heads down, your eyes closed, and, you, and your head bowed, because there's going to be two things that I'm going to talk about right now. Right now, there's an opportunity. It's open invitation to the greatest banquet you've ever been at. I'm talking about sirloin and lobsters. That's the kind of banquet I'm talking about. It's the best banquet. There's two things that are happening here. Folks, there's, there's uh, some of us that have never received Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. And there's others of us that have said we are, but we ain't. Mm -hmm. If you want to dedicate your life to Jesus Christ right now, first and foremost, I'm going to ask you to look up at me. Look up at me. I and mean, it doesn't have anything to do with me. It's just your profession to God. <laughs> in heaven of what you want in your life. Yes. Secondly, for all of us that have received him, but we haven't given him the will, and we haven't asked him into our boat, I'd like you also to look up right now if you would. Amen. Amen. Give it back to him. Amen. Now, if you would, repeat after me, all of us together. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father. Thank, you thank you for sending your Son to the cross. Son to the cross. His, blood His blood saved me, saved me. cleansed me, cleansed me. Forgave, me of all sin. forgave me of all sin. He paid the ultimate sacrifice. Paid the ultimate sacrifice. And Lord, thank you so much for that. I give you my life. It is yours. Lord, help me to remember every single day that I don't have to do anything but look up to you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord.
being mentioned, there's one church. Yeah, that's, right. that's Jesus Christ. Yes. That's right. We are the bride of Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you for your message this, this evening. We're going to have a fellowship meal in the back here in a moment. I ask you to come and join us. But at this time, I'd like to take the opportunity to bless the food. I, I feel like God wants us to take an offering. Uh, it was laid on my heart earlier, the ministry they'll have with these children in Africa. Yes. Mm -hmm. People have tithed in their churches, but today he's asking for an offering to support these children in Africa yeah. that y'all okay. support. Yeah. So the, the plate is going to go around, folks. If that's okay. Sure. Okay. The plate is going to go around, folks, because they have an incredibly important ministry that reaches out halfway across the world. The, the ministry that this church supports, the families, the father and the mother work, and their daily wages is one dollar. Mm. That's what they make. And how can they feed a family of four or five on one dollar? They can't. This ministry that Grace Point is blessed to support ensures that these children will have at least one meal a day. And if it wasn't for that, they would go hungry three and four days at a time. So I want to thank you for contributing to this. You should see the, you should see the pictures, folks. I mean, they, they, last time I was here, I saw the pictures. It is amazing what these people are doing in the lives of these individuals over there, Lord. And I just, I, Lord, bless this church for what they do every single day for these folks. Father God.